So we are in the midst of Daf Samach Amit Beis. And the Mishnah had discussed the concepts of a carbon, and specifically in our case, the carbon Pesach's requirement to be brought Lishma for the intent uh, and the designation of that carbon. And if it is brought Shalom Lishma, it's not brought for its intention, uh, meaning not the intent is not for the designation that it originally had. It would be an invalid carbon when it's Shalom Lishma. Uh, and that intent can be had by one of the four main um, uh, avodas, uh, four parts of the service, the shechita, the uh, halacha, the, the uh, kabbalah halacha, and zrika, by the receiving, uh, the shechting of the animal, the receiving of the blood, the carrying the blood, and the spritzing of the blood. And any one of those where the intent was not for the designation of that animal, of that carbon, then it would be invalid. Our Mishnah brought a case where somebody had intent for the correct, but then a, a, intent uh, for the uh, non, uh, for something else other than the designated animal, uh, uh, carbon, uh, whether that is invalid or not. And the Mishnah says it's gonna be invalid. And the Gemara was uh, trying to figure out, is it in uh, two separate avodas, which the Gemara said that would have to be the first part of the Mishnah in any case, so therefore, it must be in one avoda, in one uh, action itself, one part of the, uh, the service, there was a thought for, uh, uh, or an intent for the uh, um, designated carbon that this was designated, as well as an intent for what it was not designated for. So uh, the Gemara was uh, in you know, two opinions, either uh, this is the opinion of Rabbi Yossi, who says that af bigmar dvar other mitvas that even a person's second statement about one thing would also apply. And so, even though that at first they were, uh, this person was intending for the carbon, but they then they're intending not for the for something else for a different designation, and there and therefore it invalidated. Uh, or the thought was not about that same, it was during the same part of the service, but not about the same part of the service. During one avoda, they thought that the next step or one of the future steps they're going to do with the intent of uh, a, 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 this being a different service. Now in carbon Pesach, uh, uh, sorry, different carbon. Now the carbon Pesach itself is unique in that uh, on the 14th day of Nisan in the afternoon, that's when this carbon can be uh, uh, true to itself. Whatever it was designated is what it, uh, is what it will be. So if it was designated as a Pesach, that's the intent you have to have. However, all the rest of the year, it actually cannot be a, uh, uh, a Pesach because you can't bring a Pesach on Hanukkah or Purim or whenever else during the year. Even the, even on the 14th in the morning, you can bring a Pesach then. So bringing a Pesach any other time of the year, other than when it's meant to be, uh, actually has to be brought as a Shalomim, which is the, the general family of, of uh, the, the carbon Pesach. So it has to be brought as a Shalomim. And if you bring it for what it's designated as a carbon Pesach on Hanukkah, it's invalid. So, Hanuk, so, so the carbon Pesach, you actually all year round, if you're going to bring it as a carbon, have to bring it for something that it's not designated as. You have to bring it shalom lishma for something that it's not designated. So the Gemara is going to ask, uh, what's the halacha um, if you had first the intent for it as a Pesach on the wrong date, and then uh, which is which is no good. And then subsequently you changed within that service, within that part of the Avodah, you changed and you said, oh, actually, I'm gonna, I want it to be a Shalomim, not, which is not what it was designated as. It's Shalom Lishma. It's not for what it was, its name, meaning it's not for what it was designated, but it, that, that would be the correct thing to do in, in such a case because it's not Pesach. So the correct thing is to bring it not for its designation. So it's a time where we're doing the wrong thing is correct. Uh, bringing the carbon not as what it's designated is correct, is the right thing to do. And so does that change 
uh, the original intent? That's the question. So this is the, the, the fifth line in on Daf Samach Amid Beis. 60B, five lines in. The Gemara asks a question. Pesach sheshachte b'shay mesashana. A Pesach that was brought on other days of the year. When it cannot be, it shouldn't be brought as a Pesach because there is no such thing as a Pesach on Hanukkah. So he brings it on the rest of the days of the year. At first Lishma, uh, as a Pesach. Vishola Lishma, and then subsequently changes as a uh, 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 that it's not for a Pesach, as for a Shlomim, which, as, uh, w- which is supposed to be done that way. Mahu, what would be that? Mi asish shmoy, does the correct intent, which is that it's not for its designation, um, uh, uh, come along, umapik leimidei l'shmoy, and undo the thought that was first uh, there, which was that it is a Pesach, which is the incorrect thought. And make it valid, or do we say no? That way it does not. Um, it does not invalidate. Kiyosar of Dimi, it does not undo the invalidation. Uh, that's the question. So Kiyosar of Dimi, when Rav Dimi came, and this is what we were up to yesterday, and Rav Dimi used to travel from Eretz Yisrael to Bavel and back, and teach the teachings from one academy to the other. So when he came from Eretz Yisrael, he said, I was in Eretz Yisrael and, uh, and, and I and taught this, uh, I, I re- repeated this to Rabbi Yirmiya. And I said, Since if the, the correct intent on the day of the 14th in the afternoon of this carbon is that it should be a Pesach. And if I thought at first that this should be a Pesach and then subsequently during doing the carbon." I then thought that it should not be a Pesach, it should be a Shlomim. So if I had, sorry, if I first had the intent, on the correct intent on the, rec day, on the correct day, on the 14th in the afternoon, I thought of this as a carbon Pesach. And that, that uh, is the valid way, the correct way of having intent of this carbon. And when it's not the, the 14th day of Nisan in the afternoon, meaning any other time of the year, that's when it's not in its correct time, then the correct way to, to bring this carbon is to intend for it to be other than its uh, uh, designation, because it can't be a Pesach. So I have to think of it as a Shalomim, uh, uh, which is other than its designation, but within the same family. Shalomim, so the correct intent on the correct day, meaning on the 14th and Nisan in the afternoon, thinking of this as a carbon Pesach, if I had first thought the incorrect thought, that means the 14th in the afternoon, I brought this carbon as a, a um, something else, a shalom, which is incorrect because it's not the designation he had. And then I say, oh, no, no, that's not it. And I bring it as a carbon Pesach. But I had already had a thought of uh, uh, an invalid thought. I already had a thought of it being something other than its designation. Um, when I then think of it as the correct thought and designation, it doesn't change the original uh, thought. It doesn't undo the original thought, and the invalidation remains. Av so too, the 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 uh, the thinking of it not as its designation. Which, it, which validates it all year round. As we said, the carbon Pesach all year round has to be brought not as its designation as a Pesach, but as something else, as a Shlomim. So, so, which, which set, makes it valid the rest of the year, would not uh, undo the incorrect intent that it started with, which in this case would be call, bringing it as its designation, which is incorrect all year round. Um, Upasala should be invalid. So essentially what he's saying is that whatever validates the carbon at that moment is not strong enough to undo the previous invalid thought. Whether on the 14th of Nisan, for, uh, the, the thinking of it as Pesach will not undo the incorrect thought of thinking of it as Shlomim. So to all year round, the, the valid thought of thinking of it as Shlomim, as its non-designation, 
is go is not going to be strong enough to undo the thought of the original thought, which is invalid, of it being a uh, a, a carbon pesach. Opasol therefore remains invalid. Va'amarli and Rabbi Yirmiyah responded, "Loy, no, not a good comparison." If you had said so about a, 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 the uh, uh, original thought of of, um, of this not being its designation, uh, so on the fourteenth of Nisan, when you think of this as a shlomim, which is not what it was designated as, it was designated as a pesach, and you it had the invalid thought of thinking of it as something else. That's going to be so strong and effective that it cannot be undone. It's it, it it's uh, it, it, you've already invalidated the carbon. And why is that? Because that's universal by all carbonus. If you had the wrong intent, meaning you intended for this to be something other than its designation, it's invalid and you can't undo that anymore. However, but when you thought of this as its designation which is a unique thing. Uh, a Pesach all year round, if you think of it as a Pesach, it's going to be invalid. That's the only time this comes up, where you have the the thought of what it was actually designated. It is a Pesach, and you think of it as a Pesach, and that would be invalid. Perhaps that invalidation is weak enough that when you subsequently think of it as you the way you should bring it today, as a Shlomim, that is strong enough to undo the 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 incorrect uh, original thought because the incorrect original thought is unique over here because you're bringing it as its designation you would think that that's that's a good thing and therefore perhaps that invalidation is not strong enough to 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 solidly invalidate the carbon and if you subsequently think of it and like no 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 this is a shlumin because we're in hanukkah time now so it can't be a pesach it's a shlumin and you and you correct yourself that should be enough to undo the original uh, uh, incorrect thought. This is only true by Pesach. So maybe it works. So my have Allah. So what is the uh, 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 the Allah? Amar Rava, so Rava said, Pesach sheshochte b'shara m'shashana. A carbon Pesach that you bring Hanukkah time, meaning it was designated as a Pesach. And obviously now is not the correct time. So you're bringing it all year round, which it's supposed to be brought not for its designated time, because uh, for its designated uh, uh, intent, because there, there, there is no uh, Pesach all year round. So even though it was designated as a Pesach, you shouldn't bring it as that. But you did. You started off L'shmoi, V'shalei L'shmoi, and then you changed midway and you brought it as something that's not the Pesach, but rather, as you correctly should do, bring it as a Shlomim. Kasher, it is uh, it, it is kosher. Because, in, and he proves it from this. He says, in general, any time you've designated an animal for a carbon, without any intent, uh, if you're neutral, then it automatically uh, uh, defaults to the carbon that it was designated to. So every animal, by default, is what it's, what it's meant to be. What it's designated as, and yet, on so a Pesach all year round, if you bring it without any intent, it's a Pesach, and that's going to be invalid. Yet, when you think of it as a uh, uh, as a shlumim, that would validate it. As we said, a carbon Pesach all year round what, it is not supposed to be brought as its designation because it's not Pesach. So what are you bringing it as? A shlomim, the general peace offering. So that means when it's Hanukkah and I'm bringing this Pesach offering, which by default, if I hadn't thought anything, it would default to being a Pesach. But now I think, and I say, no, this is a, it's Hanukkah time now. I'm making this as a shlomim, as a peace offering. That would undo the default uh, status of it being a Pesach. And it's going to be a valid carbon because I brought it as what it's supposed to be brought as today, a shlomim. Alma asi shalei that tells me that a, 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 a thought, an intent of something being different to its designation, it can come along umapik midei shalei shmoi and can, un, and can contradict and undo its, uh, its uh, uh, designation.
Kishach nami l'shmai. So therefore, even if I uh, uh, verbalized or I intentionally said, this should be a Pesach, which is, he compares that, it's the same as the default, which is that it's a Pesach. And then subsequently, I then come and have my my intent that it should be different. It should not be a Pesach, it should be a Shlomit. So my intent that this should be a peace offering, which is contradictory to its designation, can undo the designation and undo uh, the uh, my original thought as well. Amalei Ravada Barava. So Ravada Barava says, Larava says, no comparison. Dilma shiny Omar If you didn't in verbalize it, you didn't intend specifically that it should be a a Pesach uh, during Hanukkah time. So there, it's true, it would default to be a a, a Pesach because that's the designation of this animal. And if you bring it without any intent, it's going to default to its designation. That's true when you have a a, a, a contradictory thought and you say, no, I don't want this to be uh, the the, uh, default. I want it to be what it's supposed to be today because it's not Pesach, it's not the 14th of Nisan. So I want it to be a Shalomim. So so to this will be a a, a Shalomim. That can undo it because I never actually verbalized or intentionally had a, a, a thought. I didn't have a thought of it being what its its designation is. So my my only single thought that this should be a shalomim undoing the designation and which is appropriate for today because it's not the 14th of Nisan, of course that'll take effect. However, if I first articulated or intentionally had this this I had the intention that this should be a a Pesach on the on the on during Hanukkah, it's not the 14th of Nisan, it's not supposed to be a Pesach, but that is its designation. And I intentionally wanted it to be that, or or I verbalized that. There, of course, it may be harder to undo my original thought. And it proves that. Daha, because we see elsewhere that when you had an original thought uh, that invalidates, it's harder to undo it. Daha, we brought this earlier, and this is the case that the next mission is going to talk about where you have a group of people that you designated for your carbon Pesach. Uh, uh, the 14th of Nisan comes and you bring the carbon Pesach, but some of the people can't eat. So you have people that can eat and people that can't eat. And the Gemara at this point thinks that the idea is that I, I first intended for all people that can eat, and then I changed my intention and I said uh, for the people that this is brought for the people that cannot eat. So uh, it, it, it's kosher uh, when I, I intend for the people that can eat and then the people that cannot eat. Yet, if I intended only for the people that cannot eat, that's that's going to be invalid because the carbon Pesach, the mitzvah of the Pesach is to be eaten. And so therefore the, de- the, the intent during uh, the service uh, the, the, the has to be for the people that can actually eat it because that is the purpose of this carbon. And, then, and therefore it would be invalid if I only intended for people that cannot eat. Vamai. Now, why is it uh, uh, why is it so? Of course, the, the, the default of a carbon Pesach is for all the people that can eat, all the people in the group that can eat. That's the default of a carbon Pesach. And yet, um, when I think of it specifically for the people that cannot eat, it's going to be invalid because I didn't have a specific thought for the people that can eat. It was just a default would take it there. So my only intent of something being for the people that cannot eat can undo the default intent and, and, and invalidate it. However, if I specifically intended for the people that can eat, and then for the people that cannot eat, my thought for the people that cannot eat would not undo my specific intent, and therefore it remains valid. So he's proving <clears throat> that uh, it's easier to undo a default uh, um, intent by an a- by by a, a, a active intent or an active statement saying that what you want more than if you had stated one thing and then uh, uh, sort of retracted or changed or you had an intent, 
and then you you change it. So that change is going to be harder to undo the original intent, rather that more it's going to be much harder than it would be to undo a default. So if you actually stated it, it's going to be harder to undo it by a second thought than if you uh, than if you uh, didn't state it at all. It's just a uh, um, a default. To which uh, he responded and said, "Amale, me the area is that is that even a good comparison?" So he says, "No, over there, um, uh, uh, as long as he didn't have the wrong intent by shechting it, it is going to be um, for for the intent of of the people that eat it." Because that's what the shechita is for, for the people that eat it. So therefore, it's for the correct intent. Uh, 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 sorry, by, by shechita, by the carbon, what is it? Is it Pesach? So by Pesach, it's, it, 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 it is clearly going to be for the carbon Pesach, for what, for, for what he intends, for what its default is. That's what the carbon is. There is no other intent to have for it. So the default is always going to be, it's a Pesach. It is, it, 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 when you shecht it without a specific intent, it's going to be a carbon Pesach. However, the intent of who is going to eat the carbon Pesach, that's fluid. That can change at any moment. And therefore, how do you know that, that, that there is even a default there that says it's for the people that can eat it? Is it really true that there's a default for the people that are going to eat it? Maybe people retracted from their group and moved to a different group. And others had to come and join this group. The Tanan, as we learned in the Mishnah, we'll learn later. Nimnim, you can join a group. And you can and you can pull out of a group. Um, until the carbon is actually slaughtered. That means up to the, you know, the, the last minute, you can change and uh, yourself, pull out of one group and go to another. Now, it's obviously hard to know exactly what that moment is because uh, because it, there are a lot of animals being shechted in the in the courtyard of the uh, Beis Hamikdash, so you wouldn't necessarily know exactly when it is. But the concept is true that uh, you can you can join and leave a group at at any moment. It only gets locked in at the shechita. So how can you say there's a default? That the default is that it, uh, for specific people that are eating this carbon, they, they could be changing at any moment. So there is no default. So you can't compare. Maybe over there, the reason why uh, the the intent for the wrong people or the intent for people that cannot eat is going to invalidate it is because there is no default. However, where there is a default, maybe uh, uh, that that default is hard to undo, just like as if you were uh, you made a statement. The Gemara now moves to another question about this concept of uh, of shinui of a change, but rather than a shinui shemoy, that you didn't change the intent of what this designation of the carbon was, meaning you didn't say that instead of this being a pesach, I want it to be a shlamim, but it was designated as a pesach, which would make it invalid uh, on the fifteenth, uh, sorry, on the fourteenth, but would actually make it valid all year round because you can't bring a pesach all year round. But that's the change of shaloy l'shmoy. You brought it not for what it was designated. How about if you change who the owner is? So instead of saying that uh, uh, this carbon was brought uh, by Rick Hazelton, and you say instead of saying I'm bringing this with the intent of Rick's carbon, say I, th- this is Neil's carbon, right? So it's shaloy sh- bailim. You changed it with the intent of a different owner. So it's not Pesach, it's Hanukkah. It's the wrong day of the year to be bringing this, but you bring it, and we know, uh, we talked about this, that the carbon Pesach all year round is a shlamim, it's a peace offering. But instead of bringing it for, you bring it as a, a Pesach, so you didn't change it to what it's supposed to be, a shlamim, uh, you kept it with its designation of Pesach, but you changed something else. Instead of saying that this was person A's, you change and you said that it's person B's. 
Mahu. So what's the halach? Shina Bailam Kashina Kailush Nami. Do I say that these are uh, uh, like uh, the same? Um, and, and just as if you change, it, it, there's a, it's valid if you change the intent of who's, of, of what the designation of the carbon is. Um, so to here, this would be valid. Umachshele. And that would make it valid because you change the intent of whose it was. So that would undo the original designation. And now it, it, it defaults as a shlamin. Or do we say, or not? Amar Papa, Amrit I made the, the rubber. So if Papa said, I, I, I repeated this in front of Rava. And I explain a change uh, generally. If you ha- intend for the carbon against its designation, it, such as uh, a, a chatas, you bring as a sh- uh, as a shlamim or an oila. Um, uh, in this case, if you bring on the fourteenth of Nisan, if you brought the Pesach as a shlamim, it would invalidate it. bismanu. So to on the 14th in the afternoon, if you bring this carbon not for its owner, you bring it for someone else, you have the wrong person's intent, uh, it's also going to invalidate it. So if, uh, so we see that they are comparable. The wrong intent of the carbon would, would, would invalidate it on the 14th afternoon. Whether the wrong intent is that it's not for the the designated carbon, you bring it as a shlamim instead of a pesach. So too, uh, if you have brought it for the wrong owner, the wrong person, you brought it in the name of Neil instead of the name of Rick, it's going to be uh, a, an invalidation on the 14th in the afternoon. And the same and the opposite is true on the Hanukkah time or any year time of the year. If you bring this pesach for a pesach, it's going to be invalid. If you bring it for a shlamim for something other than its designation, for the Shlomim family, uh, it's going to be valid because all year round the Pesach is a Shlomim. So too, uh, if you had the wrong intent of the owner, that should also make it valid. And he said to me, you can't compare the two at all. If you said that the wrong intent of, of what type of carbon it is, meaning not the designated carbon of a Pesach, but you bring it as a shlamim all year. Yeah, that's true, because that is a type of invalidation that invalidates everywhere. Shekhan put Sula Begufa. Number one, it is an invalidation in the uh, uh, invalid thought about the carbon itself, not about a second party. Also, and it's an invalidation that takes effect in all four parts of the service. If you had that intent, the wrong intent during the shechita, the shechting it, or the, the rece- Kabbalah receiving of the blood, the halacha, the bringing it to the mizbeach, the zrika, the spritzing it on the uh, on, on the miz- uh, on the mizbeach on the altar, all four uh, of the uh, these avodas are susceptible to the wrong intent about what the designation of this carbon is. And now we're on samach aleph uh, alef at the top. V'yeshnu lachamisa. And even if the original owner died, you can have the wrong intent of the carbon. As if a son brings, an heir brings a carbon that the father had, had designated, um, when they bring it, the wrong intent of what that carbon is against its designation is going to invalidate it. And not only on an individual's carbon, but on a communal carbon as well. Meaning there's a communal sin offering, and you brought it as a communal ascent offering instead of a chatas and oil, that would invalidate it. So this idea that you brought it not as its designation, it would invalidate both for an individual and a communal. But the wrong intent of who the owner is, that's not invalidation about the carbon. It's actually secondarily. It's, it's about another party. And it doesn't apply to all four parts. Because in general, most uh, most karbanas, the the shechting of the animal doesn't make a difference who the owner is. You just have to know what the designation is. What for the owner, what you really need to know is only the spritzing the blood on the mizbeach, because that's what brings the atonement. That brings the 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 uh, that's uh, that affects the the, um, uh, the 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 purpose of this karban. So if it's a sin offering, that's what makes brings the atonement for the owner. And if it's an ascent offering, that's what brings the the uh, that that uh, purpose to the owner. And if it's a pesach, the spritzing of the blood brings it to the owner. Each the spritzing of the blood is uh, onto the mizbeach is really 
what what uh, makes the carbon a carbon for the owner. So that's the only time that the the incorrect intent is going to be invalid. Now for Pesach, there is a it, it could also be by by the shechita because Pesach is mainly for eating. All right, that's what the purpose of it is to eat it at the seder. So it has to be that um, uh, that the the um, intent. Uh, has to be for the owner even at Shrita, but it's not by all four parts, by all carbonus. So this is a unique thing um, uh, that only by Zerika, whereas the invalidation of the wrong uh, intent of the designation of the carbon is by all four services. Yes, Mike. So it seems to me, and it, I, I don't see that the Gemara ever discusses it, but it, it seems to me that the one very unique aspect of the carbon Pesach with regards to Zrika, that it was absolute, like blinding speed. The, 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 he would he would hand it to the coin, the coin to the coin, 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 coin to the Zrika. I mean, the, the, so it, 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 it was like a hundred coin down the line that the Zrika took place at all. So it would have to be that what we're talking about is the Machshava. He had a machshava biz, bizman. Uh, the the only per, the, 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 the the there's no there's no way that anybody that any of the kohen knew whose blood that was. They had no idea. So so during the shechita, so the, theoretically the the person whose korban it was who did the shechita, whoever did the shechita for him, he he knew whose korban it was. But the coin team didn't know whose blood it was. There was no way. Couldn't convince me in a hundred years. No way the coin team knew whose blood, whose blood was which. It was it was going too fast. The, the empty ones were coming this way, the full ones were going that way. So when when did the machshava happen? I mean, they didn't have time to think. They didn't have, I mean, it, it was it was like uh it was like the you know, tens of thousands of of, of korbanas being being shafted at the same time. And I mean, I don't I it, just practically speaking, I mean. So what you're asking is that that uh, there was so much going on at that time, and so many people bringing the carbon. How would he know who's in? And it? so many people, and so many people dealing with the blood. Well, the only one that has to, the only one that has to uh, know is the one spritzing on the mizbeach, right? And, and you're right; he he couldn't really know. So they would default and say, "Whoever's this is, this should be good for him," and that works. The, it's only if he intended specifically for someone else. It's, oh, this is Tzvi's carbon. Uh, let me spritz it for Tzvi. And not realizing that he was off. It was, you know, that wasn't actually mine. It was somebody else's. But you're right. Uh, there was a, they, it, was so, it, it was so quick and there was so much going on that they, they just d- defaulted and said, whoever this is, this is for them. And that would work. In any case, but the wrong intent of the owner would is not the same as the wrong intent of what the designation of the carbon is, because as we said, one, it's it's not in the uh, the wrong owner is, is second party. It's not about the carbon itself, and also only applies by the spritzing of the blood in most carbonas. The ena laachamisa, and once the owner is dead, you can't think about that. It's not wrong to think about that someone else because they're not the owner anymore. They're not there. The ena and by communal. Uh, carbon, there is no wrong uh, owner because everybody's a part of the community. And even though the two of these arguments actually we could we could uh, uh, finagle our way out and say actually maybe it is it, it's not so. Uh, but two of them are really com- strong distinctions. The no shino because what which two can I uh, can I uh, finagle out of that it's true that. Um, the the invalidation of uh, the des- the wrong carbon is worse than the designation of the wrong o- owner, the invalidation of the wrong owner, uh, because it's not in the carbon itself, it's about someone else. Um, uh, the, the um, it, it's actually not in the animal in either case. It's really only in the mind of the Kohen. And also, Shri so both of them are just in the mind of the coin. They're neither of them are really an invalidation on the carbon or the owner. It's not, it's not in the body of the owner, and it's not in the body of the carbon. It's in the mind of the uh, of the coin.
Vesuvah, and besides, and also this part is not really a good distinction. This is that he said that the wrong owner doesn't apply after death. Because there is an opinion of Rabbi Pinchas, the son of Rabbi Ami, that says, even after death, since this carbon was designated by a person and someone else is bringing it on their behalf after they passed away, uh, so there is a, an invalidation of the, uh, of the wrong owner. Michael Amemar. However, the other two are still good distinctions. Tartimi is Dafkaninu. The other two are good distinctions. Ela Amarava. Therefore, Rava says Pesach. A carbon Pesach. Sheshachta Beshari Masashani. You bring it on other days of the year, not on the 14th, so uh, in the afternoon. So you bring it during Hanukkah, for instance. Beshinu uh, Bailam. And you thought of it as a Pesach, which is the wrong thing to do because it's not 14th and Nisan. But you did think of it as the wrong owner. It's as if it has no owner on the correct day. We'll puzzle and it's going to be invalid. So this was about the invalidation of the carbon, bringing a carbon Pesach with the intent of it being a shalomim on the 14th day invalidates it. Bringing a carbon Pesach any other day of the year has to be about bringing it uh, not for a, a, a Pesach. You have to bring it as a shlomim, and then it would be valid. If you bring it as a Pesach, it's going to be invalid. And if you had a, a mix of in, a, intent, that's where really we saw that it's still going to be invalid. The next Mishnah. You, you it brought the carbon Pesach with the intent that the owners or the group that are going to eat uh, uh, are are going to eat this carbon Pesach on people that cannot actually eat. They don't have the ability to eat it uh, 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 at all. Or for people that were not designated to this carbon. For people that were not uncircumcised. For people that were tummy. Puzzle, it's going to be an invalid carbon. You brought it for people that can eat as well as people that cannot eat. For people that can uh, that are joined, as well as for people that are not a part of the group. Some people that were circumcised and some that were not. For people that were tame, as and then for people that were not, or that were tahar, that were valid. Kosher, it's going to be kosher. If you brought the carbon, uh, what was that, John? I'm saying, doesn't intent only work if the thing you're intending is something that's in the realm of possibility. Like? If I say, uh, I'm bringing this Pesach for my family that's on the moon. That's what? That's on the moon. Ah. There's no way, right? It's not even a, a thing that can be possible to happen. Therefore, that intent is 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 null and void. And we, well, the on the moon part, uh, they're not on the moon. But they, if they're not even here, right, it's, it's impossible for them to eat it. But if I, I intended for the wrong people, they can't eat it. So that's going to be invalid. They're here, but they can't, they, they don't have the ability to eat. So they're, 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 they, they could be the group, but no one's, the, the purpose of a carbon Pesach is to eat it at the Seder. They're not there to eat it. So it's going to be invalid. Well, they're there to eat it. They can't eat it. So it's going to be invalid. If you shecht it at the wrong time, that means it's on the 14th, but you hit it, but you did so before noon, halachic noon, which is the exact midday of the day. It's going to be invalid. For it says, as we saw, it says in the Torah, that has to be done uh, between the evenings. He shechted it be, before the tamid offering, which is the way our, our parak began. That really the order is supposed to be the daily afternoon offering, the Tamid, and then the Pesach. But you did it wrong. You shechted it before the Tamid was shechted. So you jumped the gun. Uh, there's a 15-yard penalty there for a uh, five-yard penalty for full start, but it's not going to actually invalidate the carbon. Kosher. But however, you have to, uh, somebody who received the blood has to stir it so that it doesn't congeal while someone else goes ahead and brings the tamid, the daily offering. And then after the daily offering, after the carbon tamid is brought and spritzed on the mezbeach, then you're going to bring the, the, the blood of the Pesach that, that jumped the gun and 
and uh, um, uh, uh, and it'll be spritzed on the mizbeach. Vem nizra kosher. But even this, if you spritzed it on the mizbeach before the tamid, it'll still be kosher. Turn around, man. So the brayso talk. Ketzat shaloy la echlov. What does it mean you 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 brought a, the carbon pesach for people that cannot eat? L'shum chayla. You brought it for somebody that's ill and therefore they can't eat. Or l'shum zakein. Somebody's too elderly and they can't eat. Shalolim nuyav. What's the case of uh, people that were not designated? Nimno lov chaburazu. A group of people said, "All right, this lamb, this is for our group, for our seder." V'shachto l'shem chabura cheres. But when the intent was, when they shechted it, was for someone else, for a different group. So that's not the group that's designated. That's that's uh, that that has uh, uh, come come around this korban. Nim menanimi. How do we know that it has to be for the group that's designated to it? The Tanar Abanan, the Brisa taught. It, it says b'michsas nefashas by the count of the people by the specific group of people malamet shein apesach nishkat el alimnuyav by the group of people that are designated to it yochel shechter shal alimnuyav yehika over al mitzvah v'kashim perhaps if you shechted it for a different group all right so that you you transgressed what the Torah said but it doesn't invalidate the carbon and this is a general rule by kashim by carbon you need the Torah to say something twice to invalidate it once to make it the mitzvah to do it, and twice that if you did it differently, it's going to be invalid. So since the Torah says once, it has to be to the designated group, that would only tell me that's the mitzvah. How do I know also that if you didn't do it, it's invalid? It says, which is the count, and you should count it on this group. You should shecht it for the group. The Torah repeated it to, uh, to say, uh, um, to to say that it would be invalid if you didn't do it. Rebbe Oimad Lashen Sursihu. Rebbe says that it is a Syrian language. Uh, Rashi says uh, lingua uh, Syriani. Uh, that uh, uh, it's like a, a person says in a Syrian uh, in that language. Um, why don't you slaughter this animal for me? Fine. So that tells us that it has to be to the designated group. How do we know that it has to be people that can eat? It says a person, according to what they eat, it shall be shechted. It tells me that the people able to eat it and the people designated to it are the same rule. Uh, tomorrow, uh, uh, let's do another line. Shechted mulin. Uh, um, if you shechted um, tomorrow, we'll begin with this with this halacha, the top of Samach Aleph Amad Abase 61b. If you shechted it for people that have had circumcisions, but your intent is that the it should bring atonement also for people that did not have a a, a, um, a, a circumcision, so. The spritzing of the blood is going to be done even for uncircumcised people. So Rav Chista, Apostle, Rav Chista says that's going to invalidate it. And Rabba, 